Michael Hawk. The Angels led 5-2 in the top of the ninth and were ahead in the ALCS three games to one. The Champagne Beckham. So did the World Series. It was to me the most, might have been the most dramatic hour I, I, in the sport I've ever seen. It was rocking. The table was set. We just needed to go to, you know, eat the meal. We had the California Highway Patrol. They were now lining up from our dugout all the way to the right field line, and all the way to the left field line. We would set it out loud that, I mean, if everybody's feeling that we have a chance to win this, this game. It was pretty incredible. We had nothing else to lose. I mean, it was the last inning. Let's go for it. Start the night. Buckner gets a hit up the middle. And he hit it right where I thought he should hit it. Ground ball is short, so base hit. That happens. They got an out, and then Baylor came up with one out. I got to three and two, and I hit a ball off the plate, you know, over the center field fence. And it's three to four! It's a home run on a ball that I would throw him a hundred out of a hundred times, and I guarantee you wouldn't hit a home run on it. That's a big hit. Everybody remembers, you know, the home run I hit, but Don Baylor got the two home run that got his close. That got us back into the ball game where Gene Mock had to make a decision. Do I let Mike Witt finish the ball game out or do I get it to the bullpen? So now it's 5-4. With one out, Dwight Evans comes up, pops up to third. And I remember catching it. Mike Witt had run all the way over by third base. And I flipped him the ball in the hand and I said, this is what we've been looking for, Mike. You're the man. One out away and we're, we're in the World Series, so I'm, I'm kind of geared up for the last guy. The last guy happened to be Rich Kidd. The game was on everything. Like Mike and Tom that day. And Donnie Ford throws the ball back. And Gary Lucas as well. All of a sudden, I see Latchman jump out of the, the dugout. My mind immediately said, no, 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 leave him alone. Don't talk to him. This guy's as focused as we can get. Marcel Latchman goes to the mound. Mike Witt wanted very much to stay in the game. He felt like he could have closed out the game. He was a great pitcher. He was having a career year. And, and he still felt like he still was throwing the ball well and that he could get that last out. Do I show us any emotion here? Do I kind of fight for this? And, uh, and I thought, well, you know, I, they've been right all year as far as I went. Bob Boone and I converged rather rapidly on Marcel Latchman. So what are you doing? And, you know, there was a few other things said. And, uh, you know, Latchman barked back it's not my decision. I, I mean, I won 18 games. They made the right moves. And I thought, now is not the time to, to argue this point. All I know is he hit three rockets off of Witt during that game. One off the fence for a double, and two other line drive right on him. And he had his number. Now at the ninth inning, Witt's not going to be throwing anywhere near as hard. And Lucas had faced Gedman four times during the season. Gedman was 0 for 4 off of Lucas. It was about the fifth, maybe sixth inning. Uh, Gene had told me that if the catcher came up in that in the situation to beat us late in the game, he wasn't going to beat us. He knew he had, who he had in the bullpen and how those people matched up. He's not a guy who deviated from his managerial style. He was not a hunch manager by any means. Every move was calculated, and he did what he thought he should do at that moment. I didn't like the decision. I thought Mike was so fine, but that was Gene's decision. It didn't really matter what I thought. What does Lucas do? It's Gary Lucas hadn't hit a guy in four years. He just said, first pitch got away from the hit. It was just like, no, he not And now Henderson's coming up with Moore in the bullpen, and that's going to do it for Lucas. When I saw Donnie Moore come out behind that fence, I went, oh, no. And I think everybody on our team went, oh, no, because anybody who's had a cortisone shot knows there's no physical way you can perform, especially with a less than 24 hours you have it tonight saturday night we're playing a day game in his second year at the angels closer donnie moore has pitched most of the 1986 season in pain needing repeated cortisone injections he has been limited to 49 appearances and had converted 21 of 26 save opportunities the day they do it it hurts like hell they stick a needle in and they go to the spot so that needle is hitting what hurts See, I've never heard of anybody having it the night before pitching the next day. He always had a day off. Everybody knew that he wasn't 100%, but we also knew that if whatever he had in the bag, he was going to take it out there. We all want to play. Yeah. We all want to compete, and especially when uh, you're at a higher level, you start 
you're maybe making yourself trying to do some things that, that you wouldn't do otherwise. Tommy Moore was a tough cookie, but nobody's that tough. One pitch added to his repertoire had made all